everyone, welcome back to another ICAW vlog. My name is Dom, I'm the ISC Chair, that's the ICAW Student Council. I'm here to represent students from all around the world and make sure that students have their voice heard. So today we're going to be talking about my experience of being hired. I've been through a couple of different roles and I even changed from one employer to another during training contracts, which meant I've seen both the practice and the industry side of getting a job. I've actually been on two separate training contracts. The first one was with an audit practice and a general accountancy practice, and the second was with a company in industry. It was a large wealth management group and operated all across financial services. If you are a graduate or someone who wants to join an apprenticeship scheme straight out of school or college, then the practice route is a very common route. The way to do this is very simple. Most have their own internal websites and their websites will often have career pages. The way that I found my first job was with a practice and the way that I found them was through their careers page. They have a web page and I knew that they were a local practice so I went on their web page and I submitted my own CV and a cover letter on their careers portal. This is not uncommon for the big four and it's probably how you'll get a big four job as well. Another great way to get into the firms is to go through the internship route. If you're in university or if you're in your A-levels or you're at college, then a great thing to do will be a summer internship at one of the big four or one of the smaller firms. This is a great way to sort of get a foot in the door and also get a feel for what you might be doing and the sort of managers you might want to work for. If you're really interested in jumping straight into industry, you sort of have an idea of what industry you want to go into, then you might want to inquire directly with those industry firms. You may need to find out whether or not they are actually able to give the ICAW training contract. Firms actually have to apply and show to ICAW why they'd be a great fit for the ICAW training scheme, which means that not every company can actually give an ICAW training contract. This is quite important because you will need your professional work experience, which is the 450 days of professional work experience in a financial services or an accounting role. You also need a firm which has the ability to train chartered accountants because at the end of your contract and the end of your training file, once it's all done, you've done all the exams, you've done all your ethics, it needs to be signed off by a responsible person. And that responsible person is called a QRPT and that person needs to be someone the ICAW has pre-selected and they have applied for it and they've successfully become a QRPT. So because of that, you will need to go to an ICAW training company. Finding them is not too difficult. Most of the larger brands do it. There's all sorts of interesting companies that you could work for and train up within them. Other common routes are the National Audit Office or working for government. These are also massive employers with wonderful opportunities for training and a slightly different look on the world than Big Four, for instance. If you really want to join industry and you find that this company that you've selected is actually able to offer you an ICAW training contract, then you need to go through either their careers page or you may find it useful to use a recruitment agent. There are many recruitment agents across the UK and globally who specialise in finance and accounting roles. You want to pick one who suits you best and try and stick with just one. It decomplicates things and it makes it better for everyone. A recruitment agent is going to act on your behalf and they shouldn't charge you anything. They should only charge the client, which is actually the firm they place you with. It will generally be a portion of what you cost per year in terms of your salary, but you will never feel that bump. It's actually the company itself that pays that. Bear in mind, this may make you less attractive to some companies because you will cost a little bit more to pay. However, recruitment agents cover a lot of benefits, including the fact that they will do a lot of the admin for you. They will find the companies for you and they will be able to set up meetings for you and put your CV forward to the right people very quickly. If not, applying directly is a benefit to everyone because then the company pays less for you and you may possibly demand a higher salary and the companies may be more interested in hiring you because you'll be a bit cheaper. Many of the big four don't tend to use recruitment firms too much because of the extra cost and because they prefer to recruit internally through word of mouth and through the internship schemes they have. This is worth bearing in mind if you're targeting big four. Many companies have different application stages and different onboarding stages. A common first stage is after your CV has been submitted for you to be given a psychometric test. This is a simple maths and English or maybe just one or the other test that they will give you just to make sure that you have a decent enough ability and competence to become a chartered accountant. I wouldn't stress over this too much. People really do stress over it, especially straight out of uni, but really it's going to be just basic stuff and you don't have to get 100%. If you get 100%, that's just amazing. So I wouldn't worry about that at all. 
The second stage is the interview stage. Some companies will go straight to interview stage because psychometric tests are not always the given and they can be a bit costly and timely for companies. So many companies will just bring you straight into a first interview. This is often with the HR or personnel department before you actually meet the hiring manager and the HR person is just there to make sure that you have a great command of the English language or whatever language you're going to speak. If you're going to move to France, it may be French, for instance. And it's also to make sure that you're a real person, that you're genuinely dedicated to becoming a chartered accountant and joining this company and to make sure that you are nice. This is a very simple and informal interview normally, normally held over Zoom, Teams or literally over the phone. It can be pretty casual and don't worry about it too much. You just need to prove that you are interested in the job. So the next stage is a hiring manager interview. Generally, this is just a manager at a firm. So the firm has a hierarchy that sort of looks like juniors, semi-seniors, seniors, assistant managers, managers, associate directors, directors, partners, and then your senior managing partners, etc. So that's a very general hierarchy in the firms that they have, and you will generally be looking at a manager level. So you may go straight into a hiring manager interview. Now, the hiring manager is likely to be a manager and not a director or a partner, and they're just there to make sure that you fit the profile of what they're looking for. This is probably a more formal interview, so I would dress more formally for this and go in with a smile and be confident. You're just there to show that you are interested in the role and that you are. you've passed all the other stages of the interview process. So at this point, the company is well invested in you. So at this point, it's just about proving that you are who you say you are and you are going to be a good fit for the company. The hiring manager will probably ask you a series of preset questions such as give us an example of when you showed leadership qualities or give us an example of when you solved a problem with a team. These are sort of generic questions where you have to come up with and answer a real one. And the best way to answer this is to do the star process. You say the specific event, you say the people that were involved and then you say the action you took and the result. So that's the star method of answering a question. An example of answering in the STAR method may be during university, I was working on a project with other people who were doing the same degree as me. Together, we built a race car and the result was that we all got firsts. Very simple, but it can be effective in lots of ways. You can expand more on those little individual points to make your answer even better. That was just a quick example. Once you've done this, you may be asked to a second interview. Some people get hired on the first interview. It really depends on the process and the application process that the individual firm has. But if you do get invited to a partner interview, this is just about showing, can you communicate effectively with the C-suite? Can you effectively communicate to senior people in the firm and not make a fool of yourself? And also, can you represent the firm and ICAW and chartered accountants generally when you are fully chartered? Can you be a person of trust? Trust and integrity. Simply be yourself, be open, be honest and don't be rude. The best thing you can do is answer questions truthfully and don't argue <laughs> and be highly respectful of the partner's time. The director or partner is likely a very busy person doing really expensive work so it's very important that you respect their time and the fact that they have chosen to invest it in you. I hope this helped and the same process has been true of all the jobs that I've applied for. This is the same application process I've been through at all the jobs that I've worked for. You either apply directly from their careers page on their website or you find them through a friend and you're referred or you find them through LinkedIn jobs or another job website. Maybe your government or local area has a job website. Those can be really good as well. You find the hiring manager's email or the HR department's email and you follow up with a CV and a decently drafted cover letter. You can use AI but make sure to edit that response the AI generates because sometimes it can be a bit too vague and if they see one that looks just like someone else's it's probably because they've used chat GPT just like you. And make sure to customise your prompts if you're going to use chat GPT for instance. Once you've submitted your cover letter and your CV you then goes into the nether and then you find out that you have an interview. I went through that interview stage the same as everyone else and it's terrifying and tough and you have to really prepare yourself, learn as much as you can about the company and walk in there confidently. Rejection happens to everyone so don't feel down if you do get rejected from a certain job. You can almost always apply in a year's time or maybe later in your career if you really do care about that company and want to work for them one day. Otherwise, just take it on the chin and find the opportunity that comes to you. I think everything happens for a reason, especially when it comes to jobs. So if you didn't get it the first time, it's probably because something wasn't right for you or for them.
I hope this helps, but if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. I will be sure to try and answer them. And thank you so much for watching. Remember to comment, like, and subscribe, and stay tuned for the next ITAW vlog.